Hey guys, welcome back to the Wall Street Bull. Anthony here. I hope you're all doing well and staying positive out there, guys. It's never a dull moment in crypto. That is why I love doing daily market updates. Now today, we have some interesting stuff with Ripple and XRP. There's a lot happening uh, in regards to crypto in Australia as well. Some interesting stuff with one of our big four banks. Uh, some interesting Bitcoin price predictions as well as the World Economic Forum at Davos. Uh, basically talking there and Brad Garlinghouse is uh, there making some moves with Ripple. Anyway, I'm going to go through everything. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video, guys. Let's get straight into it. Massive shout out and thank you to every single one of you who have subscribed to the channel. <coughs> Excuse me. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Now, if you are new to the channel, make sure you smash the subscribe button down there and turn on that little bell notification as well, because as you can see right here, I love documenting my journey with investing with cryptos, dividend stocks, growth stocks, talking about passive income, building financial freedom. And yes, my goal at the end of the day is to build generational wealth. So come along this incredible journey. Things are just getting crazy in this space. Also, if you can give this video a thumbs up, watch it straight through. It would really help me push this channel out to a lot more people because the YouTube algorithm is absolute magic when you find ladies and gentlemen do that. All right. So make sure you give it a good old thumbs up. It doesn't cost you anything. It's down there. Thank you very much. You guys absolutely rock. Also, a little disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor. Please do your own research and due diligence with this stuff. I do not want to see anyone get financially hurt. That is why my number one golden rule is I only invest what I can afford to lose. And yes, we don't like to lose, but you can lose money like that in the blink of an eye in crypto. So please be careful out there. Do your own research and due diligence. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the formalities are out of the way. Davos is quite nice. I don't know if anyone's actually been there. I'm curious. Or if you live in Switzerland right now, wherever Davos is, I think it's in Switzerland. Let me know in the comments below because it looks incredible on the TV on CNBC like the last couple of days. It's been incredible. But now... Uh, Basically, I haven't put up the top altcoins, guys. I will get into that now. I'm actually going to go straight to uh, Coin Market Cap, and uh, I'm going to go show you exactly Coin Spot because this is where I personally buy my cryptos in Australia. There is a referral link below. Please feel free to use that. You will get ten dollars in Bitcoin. Again, I uh, all the prices you see here are in Australian dollars. Everything else is set to USD because I'm catering for everybody around the world and my Aussie fans. Now, let's go to Coin Market Cap. I'm going to change it around today. And we'll end up on some videos of Brad Garlinghouse, but let's have a look. We've got Bitcoin sitting at 20,000 AUD, uh, sorry, USD, not AUD, USD today, which is holding quite strong above that 20K level. Let's see if it holds. Um, again, two down 2.16% today. I'm not too worried about that. Ethereum's at 1,500 USD. XRP still at 38 cents, guys. And again, with this lawsuit, there's a lot happening with it. Uh, ADA's at 33 cents. Now, Solana as well is at $21 USD. Now, I'm wondering, did you buy Solana? Did you? Let me know in the comments below. I'm curious. I'm still bullish on it. And I'm going to go to my portfolio, actually. Let's have a look at the watch list. The only gain is in my portfolio today were Veracity. 12.53%. Uh, we had Ubix Network up 9.97%. It's like a Russian-based Ethereum, all right? It's a layer one. Pretty undervalued, in my opinion. Hedera's at 1.43% today up. XDC is up to 027 And of course, Electronium Digital Pound Foundation is the reason why I hold Electronium. It is up 0.03% today. Very, very nice. Now, Again, CoinSpot, I love it. I'm staking on there still, guys. That's pretty much all I've got on there are the staking coins. Other than that, everything else is in cold storage, all right? Now, let's go to Crypto Bubbles. Excuse me. I've got the Wall Street Bull Patreon link below, guys. I put up all my buys, my sells, my trades. Um, again, all my crypto trading bots are in the Patreon. Go and have a look at it, guys, as well as, well as my dividend stock investments. Again, very, very bullish community that I'm building. Feel free to join up. The link is below. You will not regret it. Now, Crypto Bubbles. Let's have a look here on the day. Biggest gainer, we've got Engine right here. This is one I was looking at. I mean, play to earn and whatnot. Um, I was looking at this heavily last year. I didn't end up buying it. Um, and it's up 16.5% today. But let me know in the comments below if you are invested in Engine as well. 42% again on the week is pretty crazy. Carver as well is pumping a little bit. I did see something on, I believe it was Coinbase. I don't know, Carver's been listed there on the Coinbase assets on Twitter. 9.9% .9 today, which is really nice as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. And of course, Frax again, 7.7%. It's up 63% on the week and 81% on the month, which is just crazy. And guys, if my dog barks in the background, Gucci's running around my office as well. Now, here she comes again. <laughs> anyway, sorry, guys. Again, some incredible buying opportunities still here at 3.9% for Caspar. Very, very bullish, guys. They are partnered with IBM. All right. So again, incredible quantum financial system. Look, look it up, please. I hope someone looks it up. Now, 
Anyway, moving on, we've got some interesting stuff. But Ripple gains ground in Australia as XRP transactions take on lead exchanges, which is nice. So Ripple is gaining immense ground in Australia. Yes, us Aussies right there. There's our Aussie flag. Uh, and basically, this is Gucci. She's running around. A financial review publication by Neil Smith, partner engineer at Ripple. According to the financial-based financial review news site, XRP is now dominating uh, trading volumes uh, at some Australia's top digital exchanges as Ripple-based international remittances become a key use case. We saw this coming from a mile away. Financial Review is one of our key industry newspapers as well here in Australia, which is nice. But uh, XRP accounted for 62% of volumes on Melbourne-based BTC markets and 82% of volumes on independent reserve exchange over the past 24 hours. I haven't used BTC markets before. I've got friends that use it, but uh, I use CoinSpot. All right, but nice to see Aussies are doing well with XRP. And this is interesting as well, but National Australia Bank is one of our big four banks, all right? Become second Australian bank to build a stable coin, which is interesting stuff. But the stable coin will launch on the Ethereum and Algorand blockchain. Did I not freaking tell everyone this is, this is what the money's been built on? Follow the money. The NAB Australia is one of our big four banks. I'm a NAB customer, uh, again, and has created a stable coin, AU, AUDN, weird name, uh, which it aims to launch in the middle of this year, basically 2023. And uh, the purpose of AUDM would allow its customers to settle transactions on blockchain technology in real time using Australian dollars. NAB said that the AUDN could also be used for several other purposes, including carbon credit trading, overseas money transfers, and repurchase agreements. NAB's Chief Innovation Officer Howard Silby told the Australian Financial Review, the stablecoin will launch on the Ethereum and Algorand blockchain, a smart contract platform similar to Ethereum. Absolutely bullish for both these coins, guys. Um, Gucci, come here. She's going to go nuts. Anyway, so Ripple CEO speaks out about Hinman emails in Davos. And I, there is a video on this I'm going to play you. But basically at the World Economic Forum with in Davos, one of the most beautiful places it looks like anyway. But Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse spoke out about the recent emails from the SEC. Hinman, Bill Hinman right here, Hinny boy. Uh, basically, which recently ordered to be turned over to the judge, the Ripple executive hinted that they might contain some damning information. Once these documents are eventually made public, uh, they will likely raise more questions about why the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission chose to bring its lawsuit against Ripple, according to Garlinghouse. When those come to light, I think that we will see more kind of like how it is possible the SEC decided to bring a case against Ripple, given what they were saying within their walls the ripple boss said okay and he knows what's in those emails former sec official bill Hinman gave a speech in 2018 about ethereum the second largest cryptocurrency shouldn't be classified as a security oh i can't wait for that guys it's going to be absolutely massive and basically ripple ceo xrp lawsuit resolved by june sec conduct embarrassing bullish as anything guys so we expect a decision from a judge certainly certainly uh, in 2023, you don't really have control over when a judge makes the decision, but I'm optimistic that sometime in the coming single digit months, uh, we'll have a closure there, which is nice. Really, really nice, guys. So that's not far away. Be patient. And uh, interesting stuff, but Bitcoin to reach $161,800, according to Fibonacci extension, Elliott Wave Theory. All those TA people out there, there you go. I'm not big on technical analysis. I do use a lot of indicators. I'm trying different things out, but... If you have a technical indicating strategy, by the way, let me know in the comments. Uh, but Bitcoin price is struggling to maintain above 20K. Per coin, a level, a few expected top cryptocurrency to trade it ever again once it passed the key resistance the first time. In the new prediction, the next target for Bitcoin USD might also reach a level that very few have point would consider to or expect. However, ages old mathematics uh, and when wave Elliott wave theory could suggest the next cycle may possibly peak much sooner than many would believe at a price of 161,000 USD per coin. I'm going to look this up on chat GTP as well, by the way. This is, I mean, if those of you haven't used it, please go look it up. It's crazy. Uh, now, no one's at my door, but uh, world leaders warned, uh, warmed to blockchain at Davos this year, despite crypto winter. Crypto advertising has dropped at Davos uh, 2023, uh, but the discussions and panels from the industry leaders are in full swing. Basically, this is happening. 
The World Economic Forum is holding its latest annual meeting in snowy Davos, Switzerland. It is in Switzerland. There you go. Uh, back in normal time slot after a few years of coronavirus pandemic chaos. And just last year, the 2023 conference features uh, its share of crypto companies and mini conferences right here. Why it matters, crypto being here isn't really a surprise. What is a surprise is just how industry is almost seems to be doubling down on its presence, holding as many panels and conferences as it did last year. While there are signs of the bear market, there aren't nearly as many ads or crypto house houses as those who were here in, in force, obviously, previously. Bullish, man. This is what's happening. 2030 is going to be the, the year of transition. Global control, as, as they say. Anyway, I better be keep my mouth shut about that one, obviously. Cryptometer.io, guys, let's have a look here. You got money flowing into Shiba Inu, uh, Ethereum. Uh, you've got Ton Coin. You've got Carver as well, because that just got listed on exchange Coinbase, I believe. And of course, they've got Bitcoin because everyone wants Bitcoin. Again, my cat is doing quite well. Crypto arbitrage team. I'm making 2%. I don't know why it freaking disconnects from my MetaMask. It's really annoying, but it is making me 2% per day. I am reinvesting it, having a bit of fun with this. I only put in the minimum, which is basically this 0.1 BNB. And again, um, you can reinvest this, play with it, have fun. That's what I'm doing. It's high risk, high reward. It is linked below. Feel free to check it out. Never invest more than you can afford to lose in these, in these platforms because they can disappear like that. All right. So I'm having some fun with it. And uh, again, I put in basically a hundred and I think it was about a hundred uh, AUD. There you go. All right. So I've only put in the minimum, but let's see where it goes. Anything's possible. All right. But that's a bit of fun. And again, let's go to Twitter because we've got some interesting stuff and I'm going to end up on this. I'm at the Wall Street Bull Oz. Make sure you go follow me on there, guys. It is a quick video today because I've got a lot going on, as everyone knows. Uh, I'm giving this away when I hit 100,000 subs on YouTube, which is incredible. Bitcoin leveraged, uh, leveraged traders liquidated just hodl. And uh, yeah, man, a lot of people got liquidated, uh, which is crazy. The 13th of Jan, that was not long ago. That's basically why Bitcoin boomed. Uh, and we've also had the CPI numbers as well. Now, Genesis Global Capital rumored to file for bankruptcy as soon as this week, which is, I mean, going to be interesting. Linda P. Jones, basically, Brad said they leased over $10 million of F XRP to FTX. I don't remember Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple saying they were leased. XRP to anyone before, do you digital asset buy in perspectives? This is basically an interview. Have a listen to this. XRP now, that has grown. And so, you know, we, we did have some exposure to FTX. Yeah. I think I think we publicly shared before, there's around uh, just over $10 million of XRP we had leased to uh, FTX that they used for various things on FTX. You know, what we get back from that, I have no idea. The, the, mm. the alleged fraud. Uh, I, you know, we'll see how the bankruptcy stuff plays out. And as I said, you know, re regardless of that, again, some companies were way overexposed, I think found themselves in a very stressful situation because they had too much exposure, too much debt, uh, too many of those types of things. And for us, you know, that I think represented about 1% of liquid assets. So, you know, it's kind of, it's, I mean, I would rather not lose that money. And I'm hopeful that through the bankruptcy process, we get some or all of it back, but uh, it's not too consequential to the business. Well, we publicly, when the kind of the layoffs in crypto started, we publicly announced we're still hiring. I think in Q2 last year, we hired a hundred people. In Q3, we hired a hundred people. Q4 is a little less than that, partly because of the holidays. You know, I, I, we have no plans to do any layoffs. Uh, we're going to continue to grow and hire. And again, that, that's just so we sign more customers. We need more people to support those customers. We need, uh, we're obviously building, well, not obviously, we're building new products that we are excited about. And even you know, the conversations I've had here in Davos, you know, we have cus existing customers coming to us wanting help with other elements of the kind of crypto ecosystem. How are you expecting to be resolved? Are you expecting to, to reach a settlement with the SEC or just let the judge? decide on this one so you know as i mentioned earlier we're now two years and two months in there two years and one month into the lawsuit uh sec filed suit against us saying that our sales of xrp represented sales of unregistered securities and it, you know from the beginning i thought it was very clear that the facts were on our side and the law was on our side and i think as you have seen this play out and you've seen the filings in the court that you know the, the judge certainly is hearing our arguments uh, there's been, I think the SEC's behavior in some of it has been, uh, I don't know, I, I would say embarrassing as a U.S. citizen that, that, you know, just some of the things you've seen happen, you're like, you've got to be kidding. Uh, but look, it, it's now fully filed and fully briefed uh, in front of the judge and the second district. And we expect a decision from the judge, certainly in 2023. 
Uh, but you, you don't really have any control over when a judge makes uh, their decisions. And I'm optimistic that, you know, sometime in the coming single digit number of months, we'll, we'll have closure there. To your question about settlement, I mean, the, the problem here is the SEC, in particular Gary Gensler, has articulated a view that all crypto is a security. The only way that Ripple would settle, and I've, I've, I've said this at the very beginning, the only way we would settle is if there's clarity that XRP is not a security on a go-forward basis. If we, if there's, I mean, so you have this conundrum where the SEC is saying all crypto is a security. We're saying there's only a settlement if we can say XRP is not a security on a go-forward basis. So the Venn diagram for settlement is, I think, zero. So I, I think we're going to end up letting the judge decide, and I'm very optimistic. And I think, it, and I think people here in this audience know, and here at Davos know, this case is very important to crypto, not just for Ripple, it's for, for the whole industry. And I think that the fight that we've been fighting really in some ways has been for the whole industry. And, and in terms of the SEC specifically, you've been critical of the way the US has approached regulation towards the industry. Uh, what exactly you know, are you concerned about and, and why are you critical of the way the US has approached? Well, to, I mean, to, to very things, important one, to listen you know, to these guys. Regulation through enforcement is never a particularly efficient way to regulate, right? If you want to regulate, do the work, write the rules, codify the rules. And you know, when, when a company comes to you and says, hey, help me understand the rules, I want to make sure we're following the rules, help them understand the rules. You know, I met personally with the SEC three times. Not once in those meetings did the SEC ever say to me, hey, and by the way, we're totally transparent about what we're doing. Not once did the SEC say, hey, we think XRP might be a security. So then for the later on to go back and say, hey, the whole time we thought XRP was a security, we just didn't tell you. That doesn't feel like a, a, a genuine, uh, you know, partnership between public sector and private sector. True. Moreover, and, you know, some of this stuff I'll be more uh, vague about because some of this stuff, it hasn't been public yet. But, yeah, there's something called the Hinman email. You know, Bill Hinman, the director of corporate finance at the SEC, gave a speech in June 2018 about how ETH had been a security but had magically become not a security. And uh, there's some emails associated with that that the judge ordered turned over six times. We finally did get those emails. And I think when those come to light, I think you will see more kind of like, how is it possible the SEC decided to bring a case against Ripple given what they were saying within their own walls? Yeah, and, and then if you look at the global regulatory landscape, where, where do you think is sort of on the right track? In yeah. the European Union, you've got this Mika regulation coming in which sort of specifically targets things like stable coins and exchanges. Is that a good first step? I mean, where, where, where do you see good regulation or I, good talk about regulation happening? So I think Mika is a good first step. I, and I also maybe, uh, I'll, not dodging your question, I'll get there, but I, I think one of the things that I have been struck by is how much the US regulatory discussion has dominated in some of the meetings I've been in here in Davos. And it loses sight of the fact that globally, the direction of travel on crypto regulation is actually quite positive. You have more and more countries doing the work to codify and be clear. And these are countries, these aren't, you know, small countries. You know, this includes the UK and Japan, uh, certainly here in Switzerland, uh, Singapore, the UAE. Uh, you're even seeing countries like South Africa start to do that work. And again, instead of, you know, enforcement through, sorry, regulation through enforcement, it's actually, hey, let's, let's take the time, let's partner with private sector to write down and be clear about those rules. So it, it, leaving the US aside, I think uh, it's actually quite positive. And you know, yes. Very, very bullish interview. I'm sorry, that was a very long one, guys, at least five minutes long. But thank you, Digital Asset Investor and Linda P. Jones for that one. And the SEC filed its opposition to third party A's motion to redact all references to third party A and its entity and proposed redactions, a third party A and ripple to na the names of certain public crypto trading platforms. Again, crazy and basically Plan B, putting out some bullish stuff right here. Uh, blue switch to green. 70% of all Bitcoin is in profit. That's bullish. Brad Garlinghouse, my take on Davis, which we just watched right there. And I honestly think the healthy seeing the change in how crypto showed up this year. And folks are focusing on the utility and how the technology solve real problems. And the only way the industry will move forward, great catch up. Basically, that's what we just watched. Absolutely bullish. But that's it for today's video, guys. I'm out of here. Thank you so much. And yes, I've shown you my portfolio earlier, but... Uh, incredibly bullish times all right it really is and i hope people can see that the the real utility of these coins and the banking coins which i've showed you many many times on my video that i'm very bullish on this is where the money's going right here anyway thanks very much for watching guys stay safe i'll speak to you all tomorrow peace out bye